is the kitty. He's my daddy. Ariana is very hungry. She does not want to wait. Ryder, what do you want? I just want one bite. Ryder's checking out. He's got his first shiner. How'd you get that thing in your eye? I hit it. How? I'm tired. I hit it. Outside, outside. Yeah. Really good story. The gentle thing is we're going to film. But I need to go home. I know you Mama. like to go home, but just Kids are doing their school. I'm ready to eat breakfast. It's kind of a late breakfast for me. Um, what are we making today? We are gonna make one of our surprisingly favorite recipes, which is an ultra super simple beef kidney recipe. This is a really good, I wouldn't call it a side because I've had meals where it's, it's just kidney, right? Just straight beef kidney. But it's really good with, if you have burgers or steak, something like that. It's actually really good. We, we do some yogurt cheese with it sometimes. We have some kefir cheese. Maybe that's how I'll eat it today. Personally, it's the kind of thing that I use. We make it about once a week and I use it. Every week, it's once a week for sure. Every week, at Sometimes least twice, because sometimes yeah. we'll get two kidneys every week. But it's perfect for a, a meal when we're all really hungry. Um, I usually, I'll make a steak or I'll make burgers and then we have a kidney and we split it between the four of us. Kidney used to be my least favorite organ meat. I did. Right? When, when's the first time we tried kidney? Like I think she was like a one. 2013. Yeah, so Ari that. was like a year old. Ariana was about a year old. She's yeah. loved kidney since she was a little kid. Yeah. She really, really enjoys kidney. Right, Ari? Right. <laughs> what did you say about kidney? Why is it called kidney? Because kids like it. And if you properly prepare kidney, it is one of the most flavorful and unique cuts that you can get, and it's very nourishing and nutrient dense. Um, a lot of people who have histamine issues find that kidney helps them out a lot. Kidney actually has an enzyme called DAO, uh, diamine oxidase, I think is that that's what it's called. Correct me if I'm wrong, but DAO is actually really good for histamine sensitivities and histamine issues. Um, so I, I love the taste of kidney. Uh, we'll describe it later when we try it. And it's really, really easy. How do we do it? So what do we have here? That's our beef kidney. You could do this recipe with any kidney. We use beef because it's easiest to find. Um, and the cooking times are here are set for beef. But I'll talk about if you want to adapt it for lamb. Sheep kidney is sheep. amazing. Yeah. If you're new to nose to tail eating and this is your first time cooking organ meats, you might want to opt for a lamb or a calf yeah. because precisely for that reason is because they're much more mild and with liver, it's certainly more sweet. So I enjoy this, the intense flavor. I like the intensity of the mature animal, but that's great advice. So here we go. We got the suet connects there and there's actually a big sleeve of fat that goes around the kidney. If you get sheep kidney, you can get it in the suet. You can get beef kidney in the suet too. And it's nice to bake, but we're gonna show you the simplest way to prepare kidney today. What's the simplest way to prepare kidney? Is boiling it. Boiled kidney. This sounds crazy. Super basic. <laughs> you would never know. It's an amazing recipe. Quick to make, yeah. like us blabbering here. Takes longer than making the actual recipe. Yeah. Today I'm using a four quart stainless steel saucepan to boil the kidneys in. If I'm just making one kidney, I would use a smaller pot, about two quarts. It's about three quarters of the way full because you want enough water to fully submerge your kidneys. Now I turn the stove on, medium high heat, and I bring the water to a boil. Insert carefully. This is the hardest part of the recipe. Ah! Not burning yourself. There we go. All right, now here, this is like the art of the recipe right here, right? Because you, once the kidneys are in, you want to maintain that boil. So you have to bring the heat back up a little bit, but make sure it doesn't boil over because for whatever reason, it boils over pretty easily. So, takes a little practice and you know your kitchen best. I bring it up to a boil and then leave the lid cracked and reduce the heat to the medium low. How long do you boil it? Eight minutes for, what do you call it, medium rare? Like you want it to be pink inside. So we're gonna show you two stages. We got two kidneys, we'll pull one out a little earlier. How early are you gonna pull it? Eight minutes. Both of them at eight minutes? I'll pull the first one at eight minutes. Okay. The second one we can leave in for 12 minutes. All right, so the first one was pulled out four minutes ago. This is yep. the 12 minute kidney. Yep, and it's important to have it boiling the whole time. Like a hard boil? Thank you. 
This is the one at 8 minutes. Cut that open. This one? Yeah. Alright, so that one's a little more cooked. See, I'm gonna, I prefer it like this one. Let's cut that one. I would have even done it more rare than that. That's, oh, yeah. I would have done it just, I would have done it a little tiny bit more rare than this. Where that red part in the middle, I guess I would, that would kind of be blue rare, right? Like I would consider this is a rare. This is kind of a medium rare. Look how pretty that is. We've got a real simple meal here. This is kind of a staple for, for us. We do ground beef burgers, and this ground beef is from Pecho. What do you, what do you yeah, call yeah, it? Brisket. Brisket in English, okay. Uh, brisket, Pecho, it's the chest, right? It actually has a really nice big fat cap on it, and you get a decent amount of fat on the brisket, and we really enjoy ground brisket. It's pretty affordable. It's really affordable. You have to ask for it, though, because most butchers, just by default, they trim it off. So I ask specifically for brisket with the fat ground up. And this recipe honestly never ceases to amaze me because you hear boiled kidney, you're like, really? Guys? Yeah, it's like whatever, all right, boiled kidney, all right. <laughs> but I don't even add salt to it. I don't salt the kidney much either. I, I salt the burgers. Oh, here, you can see the burgers. I've got my burgers here, and I've got some grass-fed butter, all right, some grass-fed beef burgers, some grass-fed butter. I salt the burgers. Put a little bit more salt on there. I got these cuts all over my fingers from all the vines and stuff outside and when I salt stuff I like to pinch it my fingers it just burns the shit out of me. Check out this bite. So you'll see the the fat still on that. Here you go. Here let me get a focus. Let me see if I can get a close up of that. These are the ones that our kids fight over. Uh oh. <laughs> Come and hunt it. Wow. I'm that fatty one. So it looks like the kids are about to eat all the kidney. I might not get any. <laughs> the kids are loving it. You want a fatty one? Yeah, I'm gonna have. One. I'm gonna have some. Uh, the, okay. Mm. There's a nice fatty bite. Yeah. It's so good. It's got an herby flavor. You know, it's like there's no seasonings on this. Nothing. It's just straight boiled kidney. I didn't even put salt on it. But it's got this like herby. Delicious flavor. Uh, it's really soft. Like Jessica says it's but bready. It's really nice. Jessica thinks the texture is like I bread. Do, I do, especially the more you cook it, it firms up and it, I don't know, it, it, like, it tastes like bread to me. It's crazy. It's crazy. Well, <laughs> I mean, kidney historically is one of the most sought after cuts. We live in Ecuador and kidney and liver and tongue, tongue goes they go fast, they go first. People want the kidney, people want the liver, people want the tongue here, because they use the whole animal. Right? We, uh, the animals, they're local, right? so they bring them down from the mountains, they butcher them in town. Our butcher butchers once a week, or sometimes twice a week. That's a nice bite right there. That for me. Look at that, look at that fat. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Ari's jealous of that bite. But it's, um. The kidneys go first, the liver goes first, the tongue goes first. Whereas in the West, due to the uh, kind of corporate globalization scheme, scam, <laughs> that our food system has been monopolized by, most of this stuff doesn't get consumed. A lot of this stuff will get put into uh, dog food, stuff like that. Ah. But kidney is one of the best tasting and most nourishing parts of the animal. This is the more cooked one. And I can tell as soon as I cut into it because now that it's rested for a little bit, it's more firm and the texture's different. You know, that's really good. Still really when good. When it's more cooked, it gets more of that bready texture that Jessica's talking about. And it's more filling, I notice, when it's cooked versus when it's more blueware. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that, but it's really good. Where can people find kidney? Where can you get kidney, Jessica? Number one tip is talk to whoever you're getting your meat from because you might have to make a special order, but I mean, you can almost for sure get it from a local butcher. Uh, farm direct sources are really good too. 
We have um, we have some directories on our website, primalitchhealth.com. If you search how to source quality food, that'll that'll directory will pop up. Um, also, Eat Wild is amazing. You put in your zip code if you're in the U.S. They have some international listings also, but it, there could be more. Uh, if you're in the U.S., it's a great source for uh, dairy and meats. You can get Farm Direct. Also, U.S. Wellness, if you can order online for the U.S. or Canada. Now, but didn't you write an article recently about how to source organs, liver. how to get organ meats? Oh, liver, okay. I have a complete guide to buying liver. It's really awesome. Well, I'll put that in the link in the description. If you guys are looking to implement more organs into the diet, <coughs> if you want to learn how to create nutrient-dense meals <coughs> and how to prepare animal foods nose to tail, what is this? We got Jessica's book here. Look at that. Jessica's book. Uh, you guys can get this at PrimalEdgeHealth.com. The Carnivore Cookbook. Zero carb recipes for people who really love animals. Um, there's a whole section on organs. We teach you some different methods for preparing kidney. We've got liver crisps, beef heart pizza, even got lamb testicles in there. Um, we show you how to eat nose to tail. Our, the, the kids really like testicles as well. <laughs> testicles are actually really, really tasty. But that's it, guys. Kidney. Children love it. We like it. I eat all. <laughs> if you're using smaller kidneys from a lamb or a sheep, just decrease the cooking time proportionally, right? So beef goes eight to 12 minutes. Lamb could go five to eight. Look at that. Kidney is so fatty. There's so much fat in the kidney and there's so much fat around the kidney. Great if you're doing a full carnivore diet. If you're doing a full carnivore diet, you're gonna need to get in more fat. This is a great way to do it. So, you guys can find more at Prime Ledge. Oh. Yep, last thing, if you're looking for the printable beef kidney recipe, it's on the website, right? So, PrimalEdgeHealth.com. There you go. So, get good quality kidney. Go for the grass-fed, go for the locally produced, especially with the organs, right? If you're looking for quality, you wanna go for grass-fed, especially on them organs. So, you can find more at PrimalEdgeHealth.com. Um, what else? There's a coaching session coming up a few weeks. Yep. If you want to learn more recipe tips, want to meet other people who are interested in nose to tail eating, talk to us on the call. We'll be there. The next Keto and Carnivore Collective yeah. starts in two weeks. It's our group coaching. A lot of people transitioning out of vegan vegetarian diets. A lot of a lot people, people who've done keto or carnivore long term who want to learn a little bit more, who want to have a community where they can share their experiences and learn from other people's experiences. And of course, you got full access to your coaches, Jessica and myself. We share all sorts of meal prep recipes. Ariana's not a coach. Yeah, I am. Okay, she's, she's a cheerleader. our coach. I'm the coach. So, a coach too. I'm Next Keto and Carnivore Collective is starting on March something. Um, Middle, like, mid-March. Mid-March, right. Mm -hmm. So about two weeks, three weeks from now, starting the next Keto and Carnivore Collective. Um, that's it, guys. Um, get out there, source some real good quality animal foods. Uh, get out there in your real local communities and make relationships with your farmers, right? It's very, very satisfying to get this stuff from the source, cutting out the middleman. Uh, I mean, um, the industrialized food system has uh, disconnected us from our sources of food and has cut out the small family farmer and systematically destroyed small family farms. So that's why we encourage people to support your local grass-fed beef producers support regenerative agriculture, and get involved with this stuff yourself. It's actually really easy to produce your own food on your own yeah, land. That's really fun. There you go. So get off the computer, get off the social media, get away from the freaking TVs, go eat some dang kidney, <laughs> and then go live your life. <laughs> <laughs>